everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a video as part of a series in collaboration with Leg Day and Kenobi about the recent Shanghai Masters competition that was done with the four Chinese Overwatch League teams. I am of course doing the video about Hangzhou Spark, which is one of my two favourite Overwatch League teams, although they didn't really have the best weekend at the Shanghai Masters. So this video is going to be five things that I learned about the Hangzhou Spark from the Shanghai Masters. Let's go. Number one. Gushue is not the best Orisa. Gushue is used to a very aggressive and opportunistic playstyle in which he is really leading the charge. This suits Winston or even Reinhardt way more than the more passive and less mobile Orisa. Her lack of mobility has led him to be caught out quite a lot, and it's also partly why there's a very heavy reliance on Godsby and Barzi. Which leads me on to my next point. There's a very heavy reliance on Godsby and Barzi to do most of the aggression and make most of the plays. This might sound like a kind of mundane point, after all, they are the DPS players. But after the GOATS era, the idea of star DPS players does seem more like a point to be specifically made rather than assumed. Barzi exclusively played Doomfist in this series, and he was relied upon to make the reach and engages that we may have otherwise seen Gushui make on Winston, for example. Godsby, of course, had a lot of shield break responsibility, but also to simply hold off a lot of the frontline aggression from the opposition. If either of them went down, especially Barzi, the fight would have been lost. Die, 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 triple kill. They like to use their ults to ask, not reply. Hangzhou frequently go for ult plays before the enemy does. This kind of strategy really relies on them being successful in targeting whoever has the ult threats on the enemy team and killing them quickly before they have a chance to successfully use or combine their ultimates. However, it doesn't often work. Either the enemy team has enough sustain to survive or they use their ults in time and it's very resource intensive, meaning that if their plans don't work out, then they're left with no resources for the ensuing fight or the next. This whole issue is indicative of the fact that they don't feel like they can take on a vanilla fight and keep all six of their players alive before the enemy uses their ults, so they end up using their ultimates first. They can be a little bit short-sighted or not always staying together or disengaging when they perhaps should. This one is just annoying. There have been times where Hangzhou just look totally lost in what they're doing, not disengaging at the ideal time, using ults when they have teammates who are dead or in spawn, not staying together when they should, rotating themselves into tight areas when they should know they will be eaten by a death blossom, Gushui walking into walls. Maybe they were drunk, I don't know, but they just don't look as decisive and as just part of one big team that are all on the same page as much as they did in the 2019 season of the Overwatch League. The last thing Hangzhou have is hope for the future. <laughs> We've seen how this team can perform and maybe this current patch just really isn't the one for them and it could be that they've been scrimming and preparing for the upcoming meta that will come with the new patch which obviously seems to have a lot more flexibility a lot more options in what kind of heroes you can play because otherwise maybe they would have just been scrimming the live patch just for the shanghai masters and they don't deem that to be worth their time we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes but it would have been nice to have seen some promising play and some just new things come out from this team especially as they're one of the few untapped teams from or at least mostly untapped teams from the f5 season they haven't got new players that they need to synergize with and learn to get along with they have one new coach yeah who you know you i'm hoping that we'll get to see some cool things from him and and maybe he has some tricks up his sleeve and i'm focusing on the current live patch just isn't what their priority was but I think that seeing that, you know, what's been going on in the PTR and the things that may come to Overwatch in the next couple of months as far as meta changes go, there is hope for the future for the Hangzhou Spark. I think this meta just isn't the one for them and they probably just weren't prioritizing the Shanghai Masters. At least I would like to believe that that is the case. I don't want to be taking a lighter to my Hangzhou Spark jersey anytime soon. So those are five things that we learned about the Hangzhou Spark from the Shanghai Masters. Make sure you watch the videos that Legday and Kenobi are doing on the Chengdu Hunters, the Guangzhou Charge, and the Shanghai Dragons, because there was a lot of exciting play going on in this tournament, and it looked so freaking cool. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.